Rarely do we come across stories as intriguing as the one of the religious journey of Rene Ganon, a.k.a. Abdallawad Yayaya, a French intellectual who entered the mysterious realm of metaphysical energies. His fascinating story takes us from the philosophical salons of France to the mystical landscapes of the East, right into the heart of ancient religious traditions. Yahya is a philosopher of extraordinary depth and is drawn to the mysterious and negative energy, the so-called pillars of Satan. This fascination led him to on a journey that would change his life forever. He converts to Islam, immersing himself in Eastern metaphysics, especially that which has its roots in the southern regions of Eurasia. At the age of 44, he settled in Egypt and married a woman descended from Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad. His search was not only personal, Ganon is searching for an original religious tradition, a primal spiritual truth that he believes has been distorted by human history. He's particularly fascinated by the ancient Egyptian religious systems, convinced that this is one of the oldest or perhaps borrowed from a pre-existing faith. His research led him into the complex world of Sufism, an esoteric Islamic movement. According to Ganon's research, our planet is marked by seven pillars of Satan, seven centers pulsing with strong negative energy. According to legend, it was as these locations that seven fallen angels descended from heaven. Interestingly, from a geological point of view, these places should be cavities in the Earth's crust. It is believed that the harnessing of the energy of these points could enable communication with the subterranean spirits and harness a dark force capable of dominating the world. Even during this tumultuous year of 1939, it was rumored that the Third Reich had particular interest in locating these sites. Yahya's mysterious insights revealed the location of these seven towers, guiding seekers to ancient civilizations and countries steeped in history. Imagine a mystical arc, a ghostly bow, stretching across the globe and pressing Europe into its harsh embrace. This rainbow, as ancient as time itself, is not just a geographical phenomenon, but a spiritual, metaphysical path that connects the realms of the known and the unknown, the natural and the supernatural. One end of the rainbow lies in the heart of Africa, in the mysterious lands of Niger. The ancient Egyptians, whose masters of the arcane and esoteric sciences, whispered tales of this land, claiming it to be the birthplace of the most fearsome sorcerers. The next place takes us to Sudan, a country of rugged mountains and hardy people. Here in a region as remote as its mysterious, we encounter a community of 20,000 lycanthropes, or werewolves. This is not just folklore, but a phenomenon attested to be those who have seen it with their own eyes. Our spectral arc then takes us to Asia Minor, where it branches off into two different paths. One takes us to Syria, a land rich in history and culture, and the other, Mesopotamia, the cradle of civilization itself. This arc continues its journey to the exotic lands of Turkestan, a place where the ancient and the modern coexist in a fascinating puzzle of culture and tradition. Finally, the arc heads north to the icy regions of the Ural Mountains, or perhaps to the vast expanses of Western Siberia. The exact location of these last points remain elusive, a testament to the enduring mystery of this mystical rainbow. This is no mere geographical journey, but a spiritual odyssey, a quest that leads us across continents and cultures, through time and space, and an exploration of the mystical and the unknown. The number seven, often revered in various cultures and religions for its sacred significance, it's probably the reason for its appearance in Guinan's theory. However, there may be more such zones of powerful energy scattered across our planet. 
it is extremely important to note that not all of these zones necessarily harbor satanic energies. However, Gwinnon's sources specifically mention seven such locations and we will attempt to locate them. Where are the Towers of Satan? The first two countries are in the heart of Africa, Niger and Sudan. They hold the key to a past of old as the land itself. Niger, a land where Precambrian volcanic rocks protrude from the soil like the backbone of a slumbering dragon, was once the cradle of the civilization of the hippies. The ancient society, a pillar of human development, flourished here more than 10,000 years ago before the Sahara succumbed to the merciless sun and became the desert we know today. Beneath Niger's harsh surface lies a wealth of natural resources, deposits of iron, uranium, and oil. Niger's charm lies not only in its geographical location, but also in its culture history. It is believed that it is the rich culture heritage that the hidden links to the ancient towers lie. The legends of giants that echo across the Nigerian landscape add an extra layer of mystique. These legends passed down from generation to generation tell of creatures of immense stature, mysterious and powerful. Could these tales be intertwined with the presence of the Tower of Satan? Are they the legacy of an ancient race, guardians of the supernatural energies that flow through the veins of Niger? Sudan, a land touched by the Upper Nile, and caressed by the Red Sea, was home to the Mero civilization, a society whose roots are intertwined with those of the Egyptians. The Meros were seafarers, and their knowledge of navigation was extensive as the waters they traversed. The land they called home is a geological wonder, an ancient plateau adorned with gold-bearing Archean strata. Like Niger, Sudan is also blessed with oil deposits. However, this land is a testament to the restlessness of the earth, situated on a sliding tectonic fault, a fault that is a testament to the ever-changing face of the planet. The phenomenon of tectonic faulting, in which the earth's crust shifts and melts, leads to the emergence of colossal magma fields that can simmer for millennia. The lands of Finland and Norway bear witness to this fiery past and their landscapes are dotted with ancient plumes and craters. In Finland, Lake Saima has sheltered some of these craters on its islands, with some as deep as 80 meters. These are places of power untouched by the sage of the east, but the Finns, a people with a reputation of possessing extraordinary magical abilities, call these lands home. Syria, the third tower of Satan, is a land marked by the Somalia Fault, a geological scar that stretches across Italy, Germany, and the Netherlands. According to L.H. Gumilayev, Syria is the legendary Shambhala. Here is the oldest volcanic massive, El Druz, stands as a testament to the Earth's fiery past. Once upon those shores lived the Phoenicians, a maritime people shrouded in mystery. They established colonies in the Mediterranean, sailed across Africa, and may even have ventured beyond the known world. As Rene Gwinnon says, it's not only modern civilization that is mad, but all civilizations that grow old and more materialistic end in madness. In the heart of Asia unfolds the fourth tower of our journey, Mesopotamia, summer, or as we know it today, Iraq. This land that cradled for ancient civilization whisper stories of the Neolithic. When archaeologists peel back the layers of time, they uncover temples of imaginable antiquity, adorned with peculiar sculptures and murals that seem to dance with demonic figures. This is the land where the Sumerian legend of Gilgamesh was born, a story so powerful that it's woven into the Bible, albeit with some distortions. This land was once the scene of the fierce Assyrians and later the Persians. Here rose the legendary city of Babylon, whose tower remains unfinished and is a silent witness to the death of Alexander the Great. Our journey continues to the fifth tower of Satan, Turkestan. This region covers the Asian republics of the former USSR. 
a densely populated area except for the high mountains. Mount Victory, the highest point of Tian Shan, is one of the deadliest mountains on the planet. Its history is stained with the blood of mountaineers who dared to conquer its heights. Many have never been found. The mountain's ridges composed of sedimentary, metamorphic, and indigenous rocks from the Paleozoic and Precambrian eras were once seabed. Near the top of Mount Pobeda rises a peculiar natural formation known as the obelisk, whose dark silhouette is a stark contrast against the snow. This formation, possibly the remains of a crater or underwater geyser of mud, leaves a chilling impression on those who dare to approach, of a devilish tower jutting above the highest point of the deadly landscape. The sixth and seventh towers of Satan, according to Yahya, are located closer to the Urals or in western Siberia. The Russian geologist, archaeologist, and writer Ivan Efremov wrote several stories about the mysteries of Siberia and Alta. One such tale is the Lake of Ghosts, a story about a strange lake with a sparkling surface that brings a quick death to all who find themselves on its shores. The anomaly of this natural object is that instead of water, it contains mercury a resource that has since been used for industrial purposes. The Lake Baikal area, like Sudan and Syria, is a place of fault rupture and is worth exploring. This region is steeped in ancient legends and associated with the emergence of great nations. Lake Baikal is the birthplace of the runic or Khan script, exemplified by the tomb of the great Turk hero Kultegin who began his career as a successful strategist and warlord at the age of 16. These ruins were later brought to Scandinavia, almost intact by the god Odin, the supreme ass. So it seems logical to look for the places of power, not only in hard to reach places on Earth, but in Europe itself. As we continue our journey, we remind ourselves that every step we take is a step into the past, a step into the stories that have shaped our world. The Yazidi Community The cases of anomalous humanoid beings and their connections to the Seven Towers of Satan are entwined with the intriguing beliefs of the stories of the Yadami community. In the summer of 2006, a strange incident took place in the Sinjar region, home of the Yazidi tribe. Around 3 a.m., military equipment detected a presence approaching from the foothills. However, no visible figure could be seen with the naked eye, even when the equipped reported it with only 150 meters away. The mysterious being seemed to stop for a moment before disappearing. This mysterious creature didn't emit any heart trace, further adding to the mystery. According to the beliefs of the Yazidi community and the wider religion of the region, these encounters with humanoid beings fall into the category of jinn or ghost. In Islamic lore, Jinn are supernatural beings with the free will capable of both benevolent and malevolence. Seculiar sources present an alternative view, according to which Iraq and neighboring Iran are located above vast energy portals that connect our reality to other dimensions. Presumably, this attracts aliens and unearthly beings to the area, which explains the strange encounters reported by soldiers and villagers alike. The concept of the Seven Towers of Satan postulated by Yahali adds another layer of mystery to this phenomenon. These seven locations in Africa, the Middle East, and Eastern Europe are believed to possess geographic topography altered to accept negative energy, creating a favorable environment in which supernatural phenomenon are more likely to occur. These places, as we said, are associated with the notion of seven angels falling from heaven. They are supposed to turn their, so to speak, landing places into malevolent ones. While these mysteries accounts the Yazadi people appear to be directly linked to the Seven Towers of Satan in the eyes of some Western researchers, they have historically been subject to suspicion and persecution for their alternative view of the creature story of humanity and their worship of the angel Poon known as Melak Tos. Yazadi beliefs are often misunderstood and misinterpreted by other religious groups, leading to accusations of Satanism, although they insist that the belief system has nothing to do with the falling angels or Satan. The history of the Yazadi community has been filled with trials and tragedies as they have been persecuted by extremists 
who've targeted them for their unique religious beliefs. Despite their suspicion and misconceptions associated with their faith, they continue to exist, making them an enigmatic part of Iraq's religious landscape. While the search for truth and understanding continues, the looming shadows cast upon us by the seven towers of Satan remind us of the eternal search for answers in our world filled with wonders and mysteries, many of which we have yet to be solved. Please subscribe to our channel and not to miss the next interesting videos.